This conference will now be recorded. So in the previous session, we have discussed about creating a new Salesforce account, which is a permanent account. How to create our own Salesforce account, we have discussed. I hope everybody has done with your Salesforce account creation because we have entered into the practical part from now onwards. Okay, you have to do the practical practice every day. So that you can feel comfortable with the user interface, you can feel comfortable with the navigation, you can feel comfortable with the features also which has been offered by Salesforce. And along with that, yesterday we have discussed the basic user interface and the basic features which has been offered by Salesforce. Now, so let's continue with the features. And we'll see how can we customize the features which has been given by Salesforce. Now, so that already we have discussed. Salesforce is providing the various applications by default, the inbuilt applications like the sales application, service application, marketing application, content, charter, community. Salesforce has given so many applications by default. All the applications list we can able to see inside this app launcher, which will be available at the top right corner. At the top right corner, you will be having a small drop down list is available. So now when you expand this one, we can able to see okay, all the applications which has been given by Salesforce by default. These are the various applications has been given by Salesforce. Now, so in this case, Salesforce has given the sales application, service, marketing, community, site.com, Salesforce charter, content. These are the applications has been given by Salesforce. Now, along with that, Salesforce is providing some more features also, app exchange, developer community, trailblazer community. Now, let me explain these features also, what exactly features. Now, let's compare general scenario. For example, I have purchased a mobile, a smartphone, like as a Samsung mobile. Upon purchasing the mobile, inside this smartphone, you will be having some built-in applications like you will be having some chrome application is available in built google drive will be available in built like that some ready-made applications are available in built now i want some more applications i want a banking application i want some entertainment application i want some more games also then what we can do in this case, we can get those additional application from Play Store or App Store. Okay, we can go to the Play Store or App Store. So what do you mean by this Play Store or App Store? If it is iPhone, you will be having App Store. So what do you mean by this Play Store or App Store? Play Store or App Store is nothing but a cloud space. This is nothing but a cloud space, nothing but a space, nothing but a feature which will be accessible over the internet so when you want to access this the play store or app store then we need to enable the internet right yes without the internet we can't see the applications available inside this play store or app store so play store or app store is nothing but a cloud space which contains some collection of mobile applications a set of mobile applications are available these applications belongs to the various categories because banking applications are available, financial applications are available, entertainment applications are available, some games applications are available, like the different categories of applications are available inside this Play Store or App Store. So whatever the applications given by that mobile organization by default, if those remade applications are not sufficient, if you want some more, then we can get it from the Play Store or App Store. So in this Play Store or App Store, you will be having some thousands of mobile applications are available. 
Now tell me who has developed all those thousands of applications? Samsung people, Apple people, Sony people. No, those applications are not built by this organization. These applications have been built by the various organizations. I'm having iMobile application from ICICI. That application has been built by the ICICI bank technical team. You are having Access Bank mobile application inside this Play Store. Who developed that Access Bank? We have Redbus application is there inside the Play Store. Who developed that? Some different organization. We have Paytm application is there. Who has developed that different organization? WhatsApp application is there. Who developed that different organization? That means Play Store or App Store is nothing but a cloud space which contains some set of mobile applications which has been developed by the various organizations. Various organizations are individual developers also. Okay, individual developers also. So in this case, now these applications have been built by the various organizations or individual people also. Suppose if you are a Android developer, develop your own Android application, you can place inside the Play Store also. We can do that. The facility is available. Now, in this case, what are the applications are there inside this Play Store or App Store? These applications have been built by the various organizations of the developers. Now, now tell me, all these applications are paid or free? From these applications, some of the applications are free, some of the applications are paid applications. We are having the free applications and we are having the paid applications also. Like suppose, for example, if you want to install a game, then that game requires to pay some amount. At that time, we have to make the payment. Suppose if the application is a free application, directly we can install into your mobile device, you can start utilizing that. That facility is available to you. So in this case, whatever the applications are available inside this cloud space, these applications are belongs to the various categories and these applications have been built by the various organizations or the individual developers. From these applications, some of the applications are free and some of the applications are paid applications are also available. Some applications are free and some applications are paid. Like the similar way, like the similar way. In our mobile, if you want additional application, we are going to Play Store. Now, in Salesforce, these are the applications that have been given by Salesforce. These applications are not sufficient for me. These applications are not sufficient. I want some more. I want some financial applications. I want some ERP applications. I want some other sales applications, service applications, marketing applications. I want some more than what we can do. For that one, we are using a cloud space called as App Exchange. Like as your Play Store or App Store, Salesforce is providing a cloud space called as App Exchange. This is a cloud space which contains some thousands of Salesforce applications are available. It contains some thousands of applications are there which has been built on built upon Salesforce platform. By using Salesforce platform, they have developed these applications. Now, how can you see this application? Now, let me explain. Just to click on this app exchange. Now we can see what are the various applications are available inside this app exchange. We have more than 3,900 plus applications are available. More than 3,900 plus 3,900 plus applications in this app exchange. Every day, the people are installing some more applications inside this. But whenever if you want to place the application inside this app exchange, it requires that Salesforce people's approval. Without the Salesforce people approval, we can't install the application, can't place this application inside this. Now, so now this is the app exchange. In this app exchange, we are having some thousands of applications, more than 3,900 plus applications are available, which are belongs to the various categories. What are those categories? Now let's see here in this case. Now, when you observe these top categories here, we can see this. These are the various categories of applications are there. Finance related applications are there. HR related, ERP related, sales related, service related, IT and administration related, marketing related, integration related, analytics related, Salesforce labs, the various applications are available. So now we are having that so many applications are available. More than 3,700 plus applications are available inside this app exchange. Inside this app exchange, we are having more than 3,700 plus applications are available as well. 
Till now, how many people have installed this application? It is indicating that. Okay, it is indicating that almost 8 million people, more than 8 million, nothing but 80 lakhs plus. That means 8 to 2 lakhs, 22,303 people has installed these applications as of now. More than 8 million people has used this, has developed these applications. Now, in this case, the various applications are available inside this app exchange. Now, so now in this case, we can verify category wise if you want to see the applications. If you want to see some financial application, just click on finance. All the financial related applications will be visible over here. We can see. So all the financial related applications will be getting visible over here. So we are having so many applications are available here. So we are having this. Like as accounting seed, this is one of the financial related applications. And then we are having the global accounting, the digital driver, and then cash and financial forecasting. And then we are having the payments, and then QuickBooks online, and then zero. And then we are having the time tracker and the sync Salesforce and QuickBooks. And the chat gent, like the payment center, like the Panga contracts for Salesforce, field audit trial cockpit, okay, invoices, and then XC currency, payment solved, like that. So many applications are available over here. If you want to see some more, click on show more. We can see some more applications. Now, so that we are having the some hundreds of applications are available related to the financial domain over here. Now, from these applications here, like as your Play Store or App Store, all the applications are not paid. Some are free, some are paid over here. Now, in this case, it is indicating this application is a paid application. And this is a paid application. This is also paid. This is also paid application. Nothing but we have to buy. We have to make the payment. So this is a paid application. This is a free application over here. And then this is a paid. This is also paid application. This is a free application. And then. This is a free application over here. This is also free. This is a paid. This is a free. Like that here we have so many applications are available, but all the applications are not paid. All are not free. Some are paid, some are free. So for each and every application, suppose if you want to see uh, application related details. Suppose, for example, if you know the application name, okay, if you know this application name, then we can search for the application name also by using the search box. For example, I'm searching for an application over here. Let me show you how can we use that application also. Now, I'm looking for an application over here. That is sign for Salesforce. That is sign for Salesforce. So now this is one of that application over here. Let me explain that. How can we see each and every application details? So this is an application called as a DocuSign application. Okay, now what is the use of this application? DocuSign is one of the application which is used to do the electronic signatures. In order to do the electronic signatures. Like for example, today we got an order from a specific organization or we got a contract or we need to send some quotation. At that time, then on that contract, we have to make the signature. I have to make the signature, and the client also has to make the signature. So at that time, how the client will make the signature? Do we need to go to the client location? Our client will come to my organization. It will be very difficult. For that reason, we can have the signatures electronically also by using this application called as a data sign. This is for the electronic signature server. Now, if you want to see the information about this application, just you can able to go to this application. Here it is indicating the overview. Two tabs are available over here. Overview tab, which is going to be indicating the complete information about the application here. What exactly the application, what features are available, what modules are available, everything they are going to be describing over here. We can see the whole information about the application. This is the basic documentation about this application over here. And then, 
before if the application documentation is exactly suits to your business this functionality is suits to your business then before purchasing that application then you can able to take the decision based on the review suppose if you want to buy a product then we are looking into the google what is the review of this product what is the feedback on this one what is the rating so if you want to see the review of that customers who are utilizing this application then you can go to the review tab click on review tab we can see all the customers reviews that means the people who are utilizing this application those people's review nothing but the feedback we can see the ratings information also we can see what is the overall rating everything we can see this information now we can see that customers rating over here this is one customer has given some feedback second customer has given some feedback third customer given some feedback fourth one like that so many customers are utilizing almost 4500 plus customers are using this application they have given the rating 67% of the people has given that five rating and then 28% of the people has given the four rating 3% of the people has given three rating 1% of the people has given two rating 1% of the people has given one rating the overall 4593 reviews are available overall you will be having 4.6 rating out of 5 so now in this case now the rating is also good features are also suitable for my business then i want to use before using this one i would like to have a demo how can you see the demo here for that one you will be having a demo also demo video also available over here watch a demo so now click on this watch a demo link so that you can able to see the demo of this application how the how the application look like what features are available how to use that you will be having some basic demo of this application is available after watching the demo if you want to see whether this application is a paid or free it is indicating starting at 30 dollars per month per user license it is a paid application over here this is a paid application we have to pay 30 dollars to this dacusign organization every month for user license we have to pay 30 dollars over here now so if you are ready to buy this one then if you want to install this one just go to that button called as get it now click on this get it now button then it will be asking you to make the payment once your payment has been done that is 30 dollars payment has been done then it will ask you to provide your organization credential not in which sales for account you want to install so that you can able to install you can providing your credentials you can install here from there you can see so whenever you are installing this application into your organization then it will be listing out inside this list itself here you can able to see that is sign from there you can click on that you can use this that's it simple whatever the way we are going to utilizing that mobile application by installing from the play store or app store similarly we can do that the facility is available so app exchange is app exchange is a cloud space which has been given by salesforce which contains some thousands of salesforce based applications which has been developed by the various organizations and the various individual developers so some from this application some of the applications are free some of the applications are paid now so now here in this case here, whenever if you want to use that application just you can able to go through the application features go to the go through the reviews and then you can watch a demo you can install that application into your organization also if it is a free application no need to make any payment over here simply click on get it now we can install from there you can start with let's see that facility is about this is the feature of okay app exchange products okay somebody is developing the application they are placing inside this app exchange then whenever if anybody wants to use this one make the payment utilize this one like that myself okay some other people also might be using this one so that those people will be generating some revenue also app exchange nothing but applications exchange somebody is developing that they are exchanging to the other people they are sharing to other people over here okay they are doing some business also by placing this application inside this this is also one of the major business area for salesforce okay so every application we no need to develop we can get those application from play store or app store also that facility is available to you okay the next feature the next one is we are having a feature called as developer community so what do you mean by this developer community now let me explain so now most of the people might be having some doubt 
like as of now in our batch we are having 25 members are there from out of this 25 members minimum 20 members will be having some doubt they're having a question in their mind sir as of now we are working on some java we're working on some darknet we're working on some like uh, some different technologies mainframe or any other technologies now we are learning salesforce because Salesforce is having huge demand nowadays in the market. So we are showing interest, we are learning Salesforce, and after completion of this Salesforce course, and then we are going to be applying for the jobs, then I will get a job, we will be working in an organization. Now, whenever we are working on our Salesforce application in the real time, if we have stuck up somewhere else, upon developing the application, upon working on that application or the project, if you have stuck up somewhere else, to whom do we need to contact? How can we get the help? This is a common question everybody is having in their mind. For example, assume that, assume that you might be working on some Java. One person is working on some Java since almost some seven years, 10 years, whatever, or Cbell or any other technology. So he's an expert in the technology, in the Java programming, or it may be Cbell also, whatever. Whenever he has stuck up somewhere else in that application, he is having so many his contacts are available, so many his colleagues and his friends also. He's contacting those friends and he's getting some help. Because those people are also working on Java, so that he is having so many friends out there who are working on Java, so that here he will be getting the help from his friend. But he is learning Salesforce right now. Whenever he is working in that project on Salesforce, if he's stuck up somewhere else, to whom we will contact him? How can we get the help? We don't have any friends who is working on sales for them. How can we get the help? Now, in this case, no need to worry about that. Just you can erase that question from your mind. Why? Because is okay. Why? Because is Salesforce has given a platform called as developer community. What do you mean by developer community? Now, so that already told you the concept of community inside that service cloud. During the service cloud concept, already have given the information about that community. What do you mean by community? Community is nothing but a place or a platform where customers can talk to each other. One customer can raise the question, second customer can give the solution also. That means customers are sharing their problems, they're sharing their knowledge, they're sharing their solutions also. So that here customers can talk to each other. This is a platform where my customers can communicate with each other. So that whenever they're facing some problem, they no need to come to me, they no need to raise a complaint, they can contact some other customers, then other person will solve this problem. Customers can solve their problems by themselves. One customer is facing some problem, second customer will help them, they will be giving the solution. Like the similar way here also, Salesforce has given a community called as developer community. This kind of community is not available in any technology. It may be any technology, whatever we have in IT industry, we don't have this kind of community. First time Salesforce is providing this developer community. In this developer community, you will be having more than 6 million people. More than 6 million people. That means more than 60 lakhs people are available over here. Now, so in this case, now developer community is nothing but a platform where we can able to post our questions, we can get the solutions also. Just click on this developer community. Developer community is providing the complete information whatever you want on free of cost. It is providing so much help. Whatever the help that you need, whatever the documentations you need, whatever the books that you need related to Salesforce, case studies, everything you can able to get it on free of cost. So that's what it is indicating that. So now this is the developer community over here. So in this developer community, you will be having that so many features are available in built. Like upcoming event. That means now in this community, community members are going to be conducting some webinars, nothing but some meetings. So that they are going to be explaining their solutions. They are going to be explaining about their experiences. That means what kind of complex problems they have faced and then how to solve them, what is the approach they have followed, everything they're explaining that, so that that may be helpful to the other people also. They're sharing their knowledge also. And then after that, they will be having asked a question. Suppose if you want to post your questions, generally they're posting the questions inside our blocks. Instead of placing that inside the block, so we can able to go to this community here. Click on ask a question. 
click on ask a question now here it is indicating that so many people has raised the questions over here and so many people has given the solutions also now how many questions have been placed by the people apex programming related 79000 plus questions has been raised by the people general development related 51000 Visual force programming related 35,000 plus, integration related 13,000, lightning related 11,000, and then jobs also. If you are looking for the sales force job, no need to go to any job portal. Here you will be having job board. In this job board, you will be having only sales force related jobs, not Java related, not .NET related. When you go to that job job portals, like as now Cree, Monster, there you will be having all technology jobs, but here you will be having only sales force related jobs. that means here in this case observe this one in this community you will be having more than 6 million people are available more than 6 million people are available that means 60 lakhs people are available 60 lakhs developers are available in this community that means all the salesforce developers are part of this community what are the salesforce developers are there in the entire world all the salesforce developers are members of this community so that if you are facing any problem then just you can post your question inside this wow. you post your question inside that now whenever your question has been getting posted then this question will be visible to all the 60 lakhs people any one of the person will give the solution for you okay any of the person will give the solution for you suppose if nobody has given the solution then how can we get the help at that time in this community not only the salesforce developer from salesforce.com organization salesforce support team is also members of this community okay salesforce support team is also members of this community so that those people will give the solutions to you that much of help is available from salesforce that much of support is available from sales so that's what so many customers are adopting the salesforce implementations nowadays now so this is a portal this is a community where we can able to join and we can post our question somebody will be giving the solutions also over here so that no need to feel alone even though you are new to salesforce after completion of that salesforce course okay you can join any company also upon facing any problem while developing the project then you can come to this location post your question also somebody will help you out the facilities are available <laughs> no need to feel alone no need to worry about that now in this case you can raise a question sir how can we join this community here no need to join this community manually if already you have created the salesforce account then you will be the member of community already that means whenever you are creating a new salesforce account then automatically you will be the member of this community also just come to this community click on login with salesforce now what are the salesforce account credentials that we have specify that salesforce account credentials login to this community also post your question so we okay no need to join this community separately whenever you are creating the salesforce account automatically you will be the member of this community over there that is one of the major benefit okay so that here no need to feel alone you are having almost 60 lakhs people are available who are ready to help you out if you are facing any problem now along with that if you need any guidance over here if you want to join any developer groups then you can join the developer groups also over here to get some information like as your whatsapp groups you can join the developer groups also if you want to get some tutorials nothing but some material on free of cost then you can get the materials also if you want some tools also blocks information everything is available on free of cost you can get it from the developer community itself so that what are the books what are the material what are the case studies what are the webinars everything we can able to get it from the developer community itself so no need to feel alone okay even though you are having 10 years of experience 15 years of experience on your current technology once your course has been completed then no need to worry about that okay no need to feel alone we are having almost 60 lakhs people are there who are ready to help you out that much of help and that much of support is available from salesforce side okay so this is a way we can able to use that communities developer community which has been given by salesforce team. next the next one is trail blazer community here generally nobody will explain all these things but if you aware of all this one then you will be know what are all the features given by salesforce if you have stuck up somewhere else how can we contact how can we get the help everything you should be aware of here before going to the job Now the next one is trailblazer community. 
So what do you mean by this trailblazer community? This is also called as a trailhead. Okay, this is also called as trailhead, which is one of the learning management system, like as LMS system given by Salesforce to learn the Salesforce on free of cost. In order to learn the Salesforce on free of cost, we are going to be using this trailblazer community. So we are using trailblazer community in order to learn that Salesforce and free of cost by using the trailhead. These are the various of features have been given by Salesforce by default. As part of Salesforce implementation, they are not only giving some application, they have given a cloud space also, which contains some thousands of applications which we can install into our organizations. We can able to use it. And whenever you are developing the application, if you're facing any problem, then we can able to go with that developer community. If you want to learn some new features, you can go with that Trailblazer community also. No, I think you went on the mute. Yeah. Now, so now here in this case. Now, as part of this organization, they are not only providing simply the application, they have given so many supporting features also. Okay. Now, the next one. Now, we'll see how can we customize these features right now. So what are the features have been given by Salesforce? How can we customize these features? Now let's see one by one. Let's come to the features. Here we are having a tab bar. We have the tab bar, which we have. This providing so many tabs inside this, like the home tab, charter tab, campaigns, leads, accounts, contacts, opportunities, forecast, contracts, orders, cases, solutions, products, so many tabs are available. Then what exactly this tab basically? What do you mean by this tab? What a tab represents? Okay, what a tab represents? So now here in this case, let me explain. Now, that already you know that Salesforce has given so many objects by default. Okay, Salesforce has given so many objects by default. Over. Like Salesforce has given so many objects like account object, contact object, opportunity, lead, case, solution, order, contract, forecast, product, like that so many objects are available here. So many objects are available. Now in this case, these are the single words, nothing but singular format. Like an account, single, contact, Opportunity, lead, case, solution, order, contract, forecast, product. Like that here we are having that so many objects. Object means what? Tables. These are all other tables in Salesforce. But here it is indicating like as campaigns, nothing but plural for that. Leads, accounts, contacts, opportunities, forecast, contracts, orders, cases solutions products these are all our plural format what is this plural format over here my object name is looking like this but my tabs are looking like this here what is the difference over here what exactly is each and every tab 
what it contains, what is the use of this tab, how to customize. Now let's see. Okay, now let me explain. Okay, now. For example, assume that I'm having an account object. I'm having this account object. The account object means what? Account table. This is my account table here, which is having some columns. This is my account table. This is my account table. If there is a table, then what we can do in the table? We can insert some new records. We can modify some existing records. We can delete some unused records. We can search for some records also. We can restore the deleted records also. We can do all these operations. Okay, we can do all these operations. Now, once the table is created, then initially the table is empty. Okay, the table will be empty table. Now, if you want to create some records here, then we need to insert. Okay, we can insert some new records inside this. We can update that existing records also. We can delete the records. We can undelete the records. We can view the records. So all these operations we can perform on this table. Like we can update the records also. We can delete the records. We can undelete the records. And we can able to see the records information also. Now, whenever if you want to insert the record, we need some user interface, right? Yes. That means we need some screen, right? Yes. We need some user interface over here. Assume that this is the user interface to insert the record. I'm having some text boxes over here. To enter that account record name and the account record industry value, account record annual revenue value, we have to place some text boxes. You will be having some save button will be available and the cancel button will be available. Like that, you will be having some user interface. Save button and the cancel button. So after entering some data inside these text boxes, when you click on save button, a new record will be inserting into your object automatically. So upon click on this insert button, okay, upon by using this user interface, we can insert the records. Like the similar way, if you want to update the records, we need one more user interface, right? Yes. For that one, we need a separate graphical user interface. And then to delete the records one more user interface okay to delete the records one more user interface and to view the records one more user interface we need the various user interfaces are required so that in order to delete the records we need a separate graphical user interface to undelete the records we need a separate graphical user interface to view the record we need one more graphical user interface. So that means what graphical user interface means screen like this. Not insert the record, one screen, nothing but one user interface. For the updating, one more user interface. For deletion, one more user interface. For undeletion, one more user interface. For viewing the records, one more user interface. Multiple user interfaces are required. Now, in this case, the combination of all these user interfaces, the combination of all these user interfaces is called as a tab. Is called as a tab. Okay, tab. So now we're in this case. When coming to the tab, tab is nothing but a collection of graphical user interfaces through which we can manage the records inside the table. In order to manage the records, like to insert the records, to update the records, to delete the records, to view the records, to undelete the records, whatever the user interfaces are required, the combination of all these user interfaces is called as a tab. Then what is the name of this tab? Now, when coming to the table is account. For this account table, it is providing the tab with the name accounts. Accounts. We have the plural format over here. Why plural format? Now let's see. Because by using this user interface, okay? By using this user interface, how many records we can insert? Initially, we can enter some data, click on save button, record will be created. And then click open the form again, enter the second record details, click on save button. Like that, one by one, one by one, one by one, one by one, we can create multiple records. 
By using this user interface, we can update multiple records. By using this user interface, we can delete multiple records. We can undelete multiple records. We can view multiple records. That means we are dealing with more records, multiple records. Multiple means what? Plural. So that here, to perform the operations on the multiple records by using this user interfaces, we are using a tab called as account. That's what here, table name is singular format and the tab name is plural format. Why? Because tab contains so many user interfaces. Through this user interfaces, we can manage multiple records. Not only one record, we can manage multiple records also. We can insert multiple records. We can update multiple records. We can delete multiple records. We can view multiple records. We can undelete multiple records. We can merge the records also. All the operations we can do with the help of this okay, graphical user interfaces. That's what here they have given the tab name as plural file. Okay. Now. Sir, I have a question, sir. Yeah, uh, in my in Microsoft Excel, when you update insert everything is in the same interface hmm. uh, okay so, that so is the excel sheet that is an excel sheet simply okay that is an excel sheet but it is an application okay it is having internally the database suppose when you open the excel sheet all the records are visible to you there is no safety for that Excel sheet. Suppose if you're placing the Excel sheet inside the C drive, suppose if you see application, if the system has been okay, attacked with the virus, data will be lost. File will be lost. If anybody double click on that file, everybody can open that file, then they can see the data. They can do the misutilization of your data also. That is simply a file, but this is an application. Okay? So, Only the so authorized people can see that. Suppose, for example, you have created two records. I have created four records. I can see only my records. You can see only your records, not all the records. In, in this one? Yes. Inside the Salesforce application, okay, what are the records you have created? Only those records are visible to you, not all the people's records. But administrator can see everybody's records also. So okay. in, uh, in Excel, you have only one interface, whereas here there are multiple interfaces, right? Yes, yes, yes. Because Excel sheet is simply a file. It's a file to store some data temporarily, not permanently. But this is an application which is storing the data permanently. But in that okay. you can also in a disable editing. Where? Uh, in Excel, you can disable editing, right? So, so hmm. that nobody can, can edit disable it. editing also. Now in this case, can you hide the record from one from few users? Like, for example, you have created one Excel sheet and then in that 100 records we have stored. And then in that company and you and my, we both are working in the same company here. Okay, myself and you both are working in that company. So you can see all the 100 records. I can see only 50 records. Like that, can we restrict in Excel? No, no. we can't. There is no, this is, that is not possible. Here. We don't have such kind of features. But this is the, because that is a simply a file. When you open that file, then all the 100 records are visible to you. When you open the file, I can see all the 100 records also. Okay, but this is an application which is storing the data permanently inside the database over here. Okay, another is the people can't access this data over here. Okay, thank you, sir. Now, so in this case, when coming to the tab, tab is nothing but a collection of graphical user interfaces. Tab is nothing but a collection of graphical user interfaces which are used to manage the records inside the associated object. So accounts tab is used to manage the account records. Contacts tab is used to manage the contact records. Campaign tab is used to manage the campaign records. Lead tab is used to manage the lead records. And then contract tab is used to manage the contract records. Case tab is used to manage the case records. Like that here, each and every tab is associated with an object. Each and every tab is associated with an object over here. So that by using the tab, by using those user interfaces, we can manage the records inside that associated object. The facility is available. Now, in this case, TAP provides a collection of graphical user interfaces which are used to manage the records inside the object. 
So by using those user interfaces, we can insert the records, we can update the records, we can delete the records, we can undelete the records, we can view the records, we can merge the records, we can perform all the operations on those records. So the facility is available. Now, so now, how can we customize this tabs on this tab bar over here? So what are the tabs are available on this one? Now, in this case, you can raise a question. Sir, as part of my daily business activities, I'm not using all these objects. I'm not using all these objects. As part of my daily activities, I'm going to be using that campaign. I'm using the lead. I'm using account, contact, opportunity, case, and the solution. Only these objects are interacting because my nature of work is related to these objects only. Remaining thing we were taking care of some other person. I'm not aware of that. So in this case, when coming to my tab, it is showing so many tabs over here. In this tab bar, so many tabs are available. I don't want to show all these unnecessary tabs on my tab bar here because it is giving like some confusion to me over here. So in this case, I don't want to display all these tabs on my tab bar. I want to customize. How can we customize these tabs on the tab bar? Okay, how can we customize the tabs on this tab bar over here? Instead of displaying these unused tabs, only the related tabs, required tabs, I want to make it visible. Then how can we customize? Now let's see practically over here. Remaining tabs you would like to remove from my tab bar. Removing means what? Just I would like to hide. Because these are not required for me right now. In future, that may be required. There I would like to enable that feature over here. In this case, how can we hide these tabs? How can we customize the tabs from the tab bar? Now let's see practically in this case. Now, let's see how can we customize the tabs? What is the navigation over here? Customizing the tab bar. Customizing the tabs on the tab bar. So how can we customize the tabs on the tab bar? Now let's see practically in this case. Now, in this case, when you observe this tab bar, on this tab bar, we have so many tabs are available. But at the last, you will be having a symbol called as plus symbol. Plus symbol means what? Now it is this plus symbol is indicating all tabs. That means what? Not only these tabs, we have some more tabs are available as part of the sales application, but we are unable to show all these tabs on the tab bar. Why? Because there is no lack of the space. There is no space is available. Because of the lack of the space on this tab bar, we are unable to show all the tabs related to the sales application. If you want to see those tabs, then you can click on plus symbol. Plus symbol is called as all tabs. Okay, plus symbol is called as all tabs. Now, in this case, click on this plus symbol over here. Now, go to the tab bar and click on plus symbol. Plus symbol means what? All tabs. Plus symbol means what? All tabs. Go to the tab bar and click on plus symbol. That means all tabs. And then click on Customize my tabs button. Click on customize my tabs button. Click on customize my tabs button. Select the required tabs to be visible on the tab bar by using add or remove buttons. Add or remove buttons. And arrange the tabs in the required order, in the required order, by using up or down navigation buttons. 
up our down navigation button and then click on save it. Click on save. It. These are the simple steps to navigate in order to customize the tabs on the tab. So if you want to customize the tabs on this tab bar, just to go to the tab bar and click on plus symbol. Okay, click on plus symbol in order to customize the tabs on this tab bar. Now go to the plus symbol. Click there will be a button called as customize my tabs button. Click on customize my tabs button and then select the tabs to be visible on the tab bar. That means from these tabs, what tabs you want to show on the tab bar, then you can make it available. Remaining we can remove. Removing means what we are not removing from the application. Those will be there, just we are hiding from the display purpose. Unused options we are hiding from the display purpose because after some time, if the feature is required, then we can make it enable again. It's like as a switch on and off, visible, invisible, like that. So now we can able to display only the required features on the user interface so that we can make our user interface very, very simple. We can make the user interface very, very lightweight. Instead of making the complexity inside that user interface, instead of putting the more load on that user interface, we can make the user interface simple and lightweight. So that whatever the things are required, make it visible, remaining things we can make it hide. That facility is available to you. Now, now let's see here. After that, we can arrange the tabs here. Sometimes the client is very, very specific. Why? Because if they're specific to the other. I want to display the campaign tab, and then I want to display the leads tab. Beside that, I want to display the case tab over. They're very, very specific to the other. Even though the tab is available on the tab bar somewhere, they won't accept. Beside this tab, I want this tab. That's it. They're very, very specific to the other. At that time, we are going to be arranging the tabs in the required order also by using this okay, up and down navigation buttons. And how can we do that? Now, let's see practically in this case. Now, and along with that, we can select the default landing tab also. What is the default landing tab? We'll see that option also over here. Now we can select it. Select the default landing tab. From the pick list. That means from these tabs, which tab should be get selected by default over here. We can specify that default landing tab also. Now, so now here I'm in the self application. Okay, I'm in the sales application. So as part of the sales application, we are interacting with all these objects. I want to customize the tabs on this tab bar here. So click on plus symbol. Click on plus symbol. It will display all the tabs here. Not only these tabs available on the tab bar, we have so many other tabs are also available, okay, which we can't display on the tab bar because of the lack of the space. These are the various tabs are available on this tab bar over here. Now. If you want to arrange this tab, then click on Customize My Tabs button. There is a button called as Customize My Tabs button. Click on Customize My Tabs button. Now here it is indicating two list of boxes are available. These are the tabs are available for your application. These are the tabs are currently visible on the tab bar over here. Currently, these are the tabs are visible on the tab bar. So if you don't want to display all this tab, then you can remove over here. Here we are having Add button, Remove button. Unused tabs you can remove from the tab bar. Nothing but we can make it hide from the display purpose. Now, so in this case, how can we do this one? So now I don't want to display the chakra tab, remove this one. And then I want to display the home tab. And then I want to show the campaigns, leads, accounts, contacts, opportunities. Forecast I don't want. Contract I don't want. Orders I don't want. Now I'm removing this. Remove. And then products I don't want, reports, dashboards I don't want. I'm removing this. Okay. So now here I would like to display only these tabs over here. Home tab, campaign, lead, account, contact, opportunity, case and solution. Sometimes if the client said that after this leads, I want to show case and solution. Then what we can do, just you can select this one, click on up button. By using this up and down, we can move it up. We can click on that up and then we can arrange the tabs, whatever the order that you want. Depends upon your application requirement. I'm moving it to down. 
like that we can able to arrange the tabs also in the required order based on your client's convenience based on the customer's requirement we can able to arrange that and then click on save button once you click on save button tabs will be getting arranged over here now when you go to the user interface what are the tabs that you have selected only those tabs will be getting visible to you over here campaigns leads accounts contacts opportunities cases and the solution only these tabs are getting visible over here and the remaining tabs are not visible suppose in future if you want to add some more just to go to the plus symbol again click on customize my tabs select the tabs and then we can able to make it visible over here. this is how we can customize the tabs available on the tab bar okay this is the concept of customizing the tabs according to our business requirement now the next one these tabs are providing what these are providing the various user interfaces each and every tab is providing the various user interfaces to many user cards this campaigns tab is providing the user interfaces to insert to update to delete to view to undelete that campaign related records now this accounts tab is providing the user interfaces to insert update delete view and then undelete that account records so now in this case here how can we do this operation suppose when i click on this accounts click on this accounts tab it is providing the user interfaces now this is the tab upon click on the tab it is providing a user interface this is called as tab home page this is called as home page over here okay is also called as landing page also okay landing page means what upon click on the tab what are the tab, user interface will be getting visible by default that is called as home page Okay, that is called as home page. Now, so now here in this case, now how in this case how can we customize these tabs over here? Now let me explain practically. So what are the tabs are visible? Okay. So after the tabs are visible on the tab bar, upon upon click on this tab, it is providing the tab home page. In this tab home page, it is providing that. In the left side, you will be having a small panel. There is a panel control. Now this control is called as sidebar. So this control is called as sidebar. What do you mean by this sidebar? Sidebar is nothing but a component. Okay, sidebar is nothing but a component which provides the recently performed action. Nothing but what are the records you have created recently? What are the records you have viewed recently? What are the records you have modified recently? Those records information, those recently performed actions will be getting visible inside this recent items section. So now it is providing the recent items section in which it will be representing the recently performed actions, like as recently created records, recently modified records, recently viewed record. This information will be getting visible. Along with that, it is providing the recycle bin option also. Recycle bin means what you know. Everybody knows that upon deleting, upon deleting some records, those records will be placing inside the recycle bin for 15 days, for one five, one five days. Deleted records will be available inside this recycle bin. Now, after that, it is providing that quick menu also. Nothing but the shortcut options also. Okay. So in this case, what happened? Now this sidebar is nothing but a component which contains the recently performed actions and the quick actions. And then recycle bin option also available over here. Now this is a sidebar. I don't want to make it visible. I want to make it like as a dockable. Dockable means what? Hiding. Like here, let's see. In the right side, you will be having some more. So whenever once you click on this, it is visible. If you don't want, make it hide. If you want, make it visible. If you don't want, make it hide. Like that, I want to make it dockable over here. It is called as docking. Docking means what? Hiding. Docking in the sense hiding. So that here, whatever the sidebar is available i want to make that sidebar collapsible that is also called as collapsible or dockable like as expand and the collapse okay expand and the collapse like that i want to make it collapsible how can we make the sidebar collapsible now let's see practically okay sidebar is nothing but a component which provides the recently performed actions and the quick actions and the recycle bin option 
So, but the sidebar is occupying some space in the left side, but I don't want to make it visible. Whenever I need it, I will expand it, I will use it. If I don't want, I would like to make it collapse. So how can we make it customized? Now let's see practically inside this user interface. Now, how can we make that sidebar collapsible? Yeah. Customizing the sidebar. How can we make the sidebar collapsible? Now let's see practically in this case. If you want to customize this sidebar, if you want to make it as a collapsible, then what we can do now in this case, click on that setup. Click on the setup menu. Go to the building menu in the left panel. Go to the building menu in the left panel. Click on customize and expand it. Click on customize and expand it. And click on user interface link. Click on user interface link. Okay, click on that user interface link. You'll be having a link called as user interface. Go to the sidebar settings section. Go to the sidebar settings section and select the checkbox enable collapsible sidebar, enable collapsible sidebar, and then click on save it. And then click on save it. So this is the navigation process we have to follow in order to make that sidebar collapsible. So in order to make that sidebar collapse sidebar collapsible, we are using this navigation. Go to the setup menu, go to the building menu in the left panel, and click on customize. Go to the user interface link, and then go to the sidebar settings section. Select the checkbox enable collapsible sidebar, and then make it save. Okay, this is the navigation we have to follow. Now let's see, in this case, how can we do this? Let's go to the practical part. You will be having the setup menu on the top right corner. Click on the setup menu. Go to the left panel. Here you will be having a menu called as build menu here. This is the build menu. Go to this build menu in the left panel. Here we have an option called as customize and expand it. Click on expand it. You will be having so many options are available inside this. At the last, you will be having an option called as user interface. There is an option called as user interface link. Click on this user interface link. Here you will be having the various sections. User interface section is available. Sidebar settings section is available. Calendar settings section. Name settings section. Setup settings section is available. Now I would like to customize this sidebar. So go to that sidebar settings section. Here we have a checkbox called as enable collapsible sidebar. This checkbox is not selected. So now select this checkbox over. Okay, select this checkbox, enable collapsible sidebar. Now make it save. Click on save. From now onwards, sidebar will be in the collapsible mode over. The okay, sidebar will be in the collapsible mode. How can we do that? Now let's see over. Click on any of that object over. Click on any of the object, like uh, some leads. Now tab home page is available here. Previously, tab home page is starting from this place. Right side, left side, it is occupying some space by the sidebar. But now sidebar is in collapsible state here. It is indicating like this here, after this one. In this place, you will be having that sidebar is available. 
expand this sidebar, we can see this. We can able to use this sidebar to perform the operation. If the sidebar is not required for you, just you can make it collapsible. Click on this, collapse. We can able to make it expand. We can able to make it collapse also over here. So we can able to use this. We are using this, expand it, and we can able to collapse it also over here. We can make it expand this one, we can make it collapse so that we can occupy the whole space also. Depends upon your application requirement, we can able to customize all these options also. Okay, so that your user interface, the complete browser space we can use to display this user interface in order to create the records, modify the record, delete the records, everything. Okay, this is how we are going to be customizing the tabs and the sidebar inside your user interface. Okay. So in the next session, we'll see how to manage the records inside this object, because how to create the records, how to update the records, delete the records, restore the records, view the records, everything we'll see practically. Then we'll see how to create our own custom applications also. Instead of using this one, how to create our own custom applications, custom objects, custom tabs, custom features, everything we'll see one by one. Okay. So do the practice on this one today. In the next session, we'll see the how to manage the records inside this object also. I will show you how to see the objects information, fields information, everything we'll see one by one.